Welcome to 50 Plus in Montgomery County, a monthly program that is a voice for many and produced by the Commission of Aging. Each episode, we look at issues important to older adults. We spotlight representatives of services and programs and activities of interest. My name is Jean Dinwiddie. I'm co-chair of the Commission's Communication Committee. I'm subbing in for our regular host, Commissioner Katie Smith. On this month's show, we're going to talk about staying safely in your home as you age. Joining me is Jim Resnick, who recently spoke with us about the safety domain of the Age Friendly Initiative. Some of our viewers may recall that Jim is the program manager for the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Community Risk Reduction Section. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you, Jean, and I appreciate the time that you're giving me today. Oh, our pleasure. You conduct in-person safety visits, don't you, Jim? Yes, ma'am. Uh, myself and when we have additional funding available, there's other firefighters that will work with me and with our program and we can go to people's homes on an appointment basis and check to make sure that the things that they have in their home are keeping them safe. And we also provide safety recommendations too. So what are the common things you see when people are aging in place when you do these these safety visits? Well, the first thing I ask people to do is I, and when they're thinking about whether or not they want to have myself or someone from our program come out to their homes is I ask them to think like a firefighter. And by that, I'm asking them to look up. And what I'm looking up at right now on my ceiling is my smoke alarm. Do you have working smoke alarms? Are they in the right places? How do you know that they're working? When's the last time that you've tested your smoke alarms? those kinds of things. So let's start with some of the basics. And I not only want you to look up, I want people to look down. I want them to look for tripping hazards. I want them to look for excessive use of extension cords or surge protectors. Um, the list goes on and on. So, uh, and my dog is just making sure that things are safe in my <laughs> home right now. So, so how do you verify? So do we need both a smoke and a carbon monoxide alarm? Beautiful question. Thank you for asking that, Gene. So the short answer is it kind of depends. Um, if I live in an all electric home with no, nothing in my home that can burn, and by that I mean I don't have a fireplace, I don't have gas stoves, ovens, furnaces, water heaters, I don't have an attached garage because an engine of a car, an internal combustion engine, is something that's burning. I don't have a generator, anything like that in or attached to the house, then I don't have any possible sources of carbon monoxide. Oh. So for that all electric home, there's not a need for a carbon monoxide alarm. For all of the rest of us, if you have any one of those items, a fireplace, a gas stove, a gas furnace, or anything like that, you should have a carbon monoxide alarm on every level of the home. Oh, I was going to ask where these, where the alarm should be located. So where should the smoke alarm be? I assume we all need smoke alarms. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we want to have working smoke alarms. And I've got a couple of examples of different kinds here. I want to have at least one of these on every level of my home, every occupiable level. So if I have, like for my house here, I have an unfinished attic. We don't have access to it except without pulling out a ladder and stuff like that. I don't need a smoke alarm in my attic, but for this level, for my basement level, I do need to have working smoke alarms on each level. And it's also, depending on when your home was built, it might, might not be a requirement, but it's a great idea to have a smoke alarm, not only outside of the bedrooms, but inside each one of the bedrooms too. Wherever people sleep, we want to have them protected by a working smoke alarm. So now, it's, where, it's where people sleep and not necessarily like near the kitchen where you would think a fire might be? Great question. And yeah, that's exactly right. When we're awake, we have the best smoke alarm in the world. And that's this thing right in between our eyes, okay? A working smoke alarm is primarily to do two jobs for us. It's to alert you when you're asleep because your nose is not working as well when we're sleeping. 
and they're also designed to protect the way out. So I'll use my living room back here as an example. It's a lovely living room. It's a great living room, but no one sleeps there. And even though there's a window out of the living room, that's not what I'm going to consider to be a primary exit. So I don't need a smoke alarm in my living room or in my kitchen or my dining room, but I need one outside my bedrooms to alert me if there's smoke in the hallway outside my bedrooms. And it's a great idea to have one inside the bedroom too. And also depending on the layout of the home, you want to protect the stairs. If I'm living on the oh. second floor, I need to make sure I can come down the stairs to a landing which is clear of dangerous smoke. So that's why we want one usually in the foyer, that type of an area. Well, that makes so much sense. And yet I, I know I wouldn't have thought of that. I would think put it near the kitchen. So do I need to buy smoke alarms? Great Will the question. county provide? Great. You're asking all the right questions. So the, <laughs> the first thing is that we all need to have the proper number of working smoke alarms. And one other thing I need to mention is all smoke alarms need to be less than 10 years old. That is not only Montgomery County law and Maryland state law, but it's also what the manufacturer of these smoke alarms has been saying for decades. If you read the fine print in the owner's manual, it would say these alarms should be changed every 10 years. And it doesn't matter if it's a battery only alarm like the one I have here, or if it's a wired in alarm like I'm holding up now. Either of these, we need to change them out every 10 years. So the thing to do is an assessment. Do I have enough in my home to protect each level and the sleeping areas and the bedrooms? And then are they working and up to date? If you think that you might not have working smoke alarms, enough smoke alarms, the right kind of smoke alarms or whatever, please contact us. You can do that by calling 311. You can go to MC311 on your computer, or you can go to mcfrs.org slash mcsafe, M-C-S-A-F-E, and you can request a home safety evaluation. This is a free service of the county. We do have some free smoke alarms for people, but we also have a very, very limited budget and we have a big county with well over a million people and well over 400,000 homes in it. I wish I had the kind of budget to provide the materials for people. But what I'll tell folks is number one, if you think you need these items, buy them. Myself, the firefighters that I work with, we can install them for you. If you've wow. got the wrong kind, if you don't need them, well, you can return them. You can take care of doing things like that. And for people certainly who have a financial need, we will bring some with us so that we can provide at least a basic level of protection. So you'll, if I buy my smoke alarm, you'll come and install them? Within limits. Okay. Um, the way I describe it is this, I'm not an electrician. OK, myself and the other firefighters that I work with are not electricians. Um, we are limited in how high up we can work on a ceiling. If you have a vaulted ceiling that's 20 feet tall, okay. I'm not going to be able to do something like that. So there may be some specific situations, but you can always call us. We'll evaluate and we'll let you know what we can do and what you might need. And what if I don't know how old my smoke alarm is? Because I personally well, I'll just admit to you, my smoke alarm is in the kitchen and my, I, I have no idea how old it is. I do replace Gene, the batteries is, every time, but. Gene, this is not about you having to confess anything. <laughs> so on the side of the smoke alarm, there is a label which someone who installs oh. this could write the information. But problem is though, when I'm standing here and then I'm looking up at the ceiling, I may or may not be able to read that. So what we ask people to do is write it down on a piece of paper, put it on your bulletin board okay. or something along those lines. Um, one thing you can do is number one, look for discoloration. Um, smoke alarms are generally pretty white when you buy them, but over time, just with cooking smoke and the normal things in our lives, they tend to discolor a little bit. If they appear discolored, that's an indication they may not be too, they, they may be more than 10 years old. And I also want to throw a little curveball at you. You mentioned something about batteries. 
This particular smoke alarm here is a very good smoke alarm, but this one is only powered by a removable nine volt battery. Maryland and Montgomery County changed our law in 2018 to require us that these types of alarms are not allowable in Montgomery County or in the state of Maryland anymore, where a removable battery is the primary power source. Wow. So I either have to have hardwired alarms with some kind of a battery backup, or I can have smoke alarms with a sealed in 10 year battery. Okay. That's what this kind is. Wow, that's important information. And it is. I have some work to do. So um, so tell me, Jim, what is the cost of your home safety visit? Oh, did I mention the cost? It's free. No, not yet. Oh, it's free. Our home safety checks, along with the other services provided by the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service, are free of charge. There is no charge for anything that we're going to do. Wow. So, Jim, tell me quickly um what what else do you look for so we look to make sure that people are safe in their homes we want to consider medications if they do take medications are the medications safely stored are they in a place where the person can certainly get to them but pets children visitors other folks like that can't get to them so we want to make sure that we maintain a level of uh, safety in terms of our medications we look for effect uh, clear lighting we look to make sure that the stairs are clear that you, you aren't having don't have any tripping hazards on the stairs we often make recommendations about adding handrails and things like that and i also want to make sure i mention the file of life we look to make sure that people have a file of life and not only do they have it but is it filled out? Have they completed the <laughs> form? Because this doesn't do anyone any good. The file of life is a form with medical information that you fill out. So God forbid there's a medical emergency, the paramedics, the EMTs, the firefighters, they know the information that we need to help you. And would we call 311, just like we would call 311 to schedule a visit? Could 311 provide us with a file of life also? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Forever. And, and, and I, I'm glad you're talking about 311 that way, because it's kind of a one-stop shop for all the non-emergency services that Montgomery County can offer. And we work very closely with our partners in the 311 Center, and we're constantly handling requests for files of life, home safety checks, and other questions and needs. Well, Jim, you are a rock star. I know after your last visit, I did my own file of life. And now after this visit, I have learned I need some work done myself on the smoke alarms. So Jim, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Thank you. I appreciate the time. And uh, I love the 50 plus connections. Wonderful. Thank you.